Namaste and welcome to all of you who attend these talks during the COVID time. And today I would like to speak to you on divine grace. The mother has said, the Supreme has sent his grace into the world to save it. It is the divine grace that must be prayed for. If justice were to manifest, very few would be those who could stand in front of it. The divine grace alone has the power to intervene and change the course of universal justice. The great work of the avatar is to manifest the divine grace upon earth. To be a disciple of the avatar is to become an instrument of the divine grace. The mother is the great dispensatrix through identity of the divine grace with a perfect knowledge through identity of the absolute mechanism of universal justice. Each one here represents an impossibility to be solved, but as for the divine grace, all is possible. Thy work will be in the detail as in the whole, the accomplishment of all these impossibilities transformed into divine realizations. In 1939, on the 7th of April, the mother wrote, the divine grace cannot be explained through words and mental formulas. And then in 1954, she writes, it is only the divine's grace that can give peace, happiness, power, light, knowledge, beatitude, and love in their essence and their truth. Who is worthy or unworthy in front of the divine grace? All are children of the one and the same mother. Her love is equally spread over all of them, but to each one she gives according to his nature and receptivity. Let us give ourselves without reserve to the divine. So best shall we receive the divine grace. Have a steady faith in the divine grace. Continue to have full faith in the divine's grace, will and action, and all will be all right. The divine grace is with us and never leaves us, even when the appearances are dark. Through this apparent chaos, a new and better order is being formed. But to see it, one must have faith in the divine grace. Cheer up. It is when all seems lost that all can be saved. When you have lost confidence in your personal power, then you should have faith in the divine grace. In the final analysis, everything really depends on the divine grace. And we should look at the future with confidence and serenity, progressing at the same time as quickly as we can. 
have faith and unshaken confidence. The divine grace will do the rest. Let us offer our will to the divine grace. It is the grace that accomplishes all. The grace, the grace alone can act. That alone can open the way. That alone can do the miracle. Keep good faith in the grace. She is the doer of all miracles. We must learn to rely only on the divine grace and to call for its help in all circumstances. Then it will work out constant miracles. However long the journey may be, and however great the traveler, at the end is always found exclusive reliance on the divine grace. The divine grace is always with you and by your trust, you allow its action to be effective. It is in proportion to our trust in the divine that the divine grace can act for us and help. Keep a cool head, strong and very quiet nerves and a complete trust in the divine grace. Aspiration for trust in the divine is an intense need for that immutable peace given by the certitude of the divine grace. It is only by remaining perfectly peaceful and calm with an unshakable confidence and faith in the divine grace that you will allow circumstances to be as good as they can be. The very best happens always to those who have put their entire trust in the divine and in the divine alone. In any case, whatever happens, always consider events as a gift from the divine grace, which is leading you by swift paths towards the spiritual goal of your life. All depends on what you want. If you want yoga, take all that happens as the expression of the divine grace, leading you towards your goal and try to understand the lessons that circumstances give. When difficulties besiege you, know that the divine grace is with you. And now we have Sri Aurobindo. And he says, I should like to say something about the divine grace. For you seem to think it should be something like a divine reason acting upon lines not very different from those of human intelligence, but it is not that. Also, it is not a universal divine compassion either. acting impartially on all who approach it and acceding to all prayers. It does not select the righteous and reject the sinner. The divine grace came to aid the persecutor, Saul of Tarsus, 
it came to Saint Augustine, the profligate, to Jagai and Matai of infamous fame, to Bilwa Mangal and many others whose conversion might well scandalize the Puritanism of the human moral intelligence. But it can come to the righteous also, curing them of their self-righteousness and leading to a purer consciousness beyond these things. It is a power that is superior to any rule, even to the cosmic law, for all spiritual seers have distinguished between the law and grace. The existence of difficulties is a known thing in yoga. There is no reason for questioning the final victory or the effectuality of the divine grace. Have faith in the divine, in the divine grace, in the truth of the sadhana, in the eventual triumph of the spirit over its mental and vital and physical difficulties, in the path and the guru, in the experience of things other than are written in the philosophy of Haeckel or Huxley or Bertrand Russell. Because if these things are not true, there is no meaning in yoga. The divine grace and power can do everything, but with the full ascent of the sadhak. To learn to give that full ascent is the whole meaning of the sadhana. It may take time, either because of ideas in the mind, desires in the vital, or inertia in the physical consciousness. But these things have to be and can be removed with the aid or by calling in the action of the divine force. Do not allow any discouragement to come upon you and have no distrust of the divine grace. Whatever difficulties are outside you, whatever weaknesses are inside you, if you keep firm hold on your faith and your aspiration, the secret power will carry you through and bring you back here. Even if you are oppressed with opposition and difficulties, even if you stumble, even if the way seems closed to you, keep hold on your aspiration. If faith is clouded for a time, turn always in mind and heart to us, and it will be removed. As for outer help in the way of letters, we are perfectly ready to give it to you, but keep firm on the way. Then in the end, things open out of themselves and circumstances yield to the inner spirit. Namaste. In closing, I would like to say that people still write today letters to mother. They're put in a little box at the entrance to the ashram. And they are, to my knowledge, placed in her room. And you will receive the answers. Even if a letter is written in your mind to her, you will receive the answer. Namaste.